Hello friends, and welcome to another Tech Tip Tuesdays, where we give you tech tips on Tuesdays. In this video, we're gonna be looking at how we can securely manage and store our secrets, like API keys and other credentials in our Python projects. These are very sensitive and it's important that we get out of bad habits, like hard coding them directly into our source code. In this video, we're gonna look at the basics and how we can quickly do this securely. And we're also gonna look at some more advanced scenarios. Like at the end, we'll look at how we can manage the secrets of different environments, say production and development, very easily and switch between the two using a simple package. But before we get into all of that, if you like this type of content, then I hope you would please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. It really helps, especially as we're just getting started. We have content like this all the time with lots of great content in our library. All right, let's dive straight in. On my screen, you're gonna see an incredibly basic Python project. This Python project has really got two parts to it. Now, while this is really, really basic, these parts may transfer into something that you're working with in your own project. So we're applying our secrets. So that means we have a variable here. We have two, API key and API secret, and then we're giving them some values. And then we're using our secret. Now, in my project, I'm just printing them out in our console. There's no real scenario where this is a good idea. <laughs> But we're going to do this just as a way of illustrating, hey, we've got our secrets, we're doing something with our secrets. So if I run this project here, what happens? Well, as I said, it just prints out our secrets. But this is really insecure. Why? Well, we've committed some pretty big software engineering sins here. We've hard coded the secrets into our source code. That means that this is saved in this file. If we version control it, it's gonna be in our version control. It's gonna be cloned onto whoever else's computer. It's gonna maintain in our history. And these are really, really sensitive. So this is a terrible idea. What's the way that we can handle these secrets instead? Well, we can use environment variables. So an environment variable is in a variable that sits in your local memory. Now, this may be the local memory of your machine, or it could be the local memory of the cloud host that you're gonna have your application running in when we deploy it. Doesn't matter, it works in the same way. Essentially, we wanna inject these secrets into our local memory, then our application can use them without fear of them being uh, exfiltrated from an attacker, and we don't need to put them in our source code. Great, right? So how do we do this? Well, it's actually really simple. If I run the command env, this prints out a list of variables that are running in our local environment. So what I want to do is I want to put these variables here inside this environment. So using the command export, then the variable name, API underscore key, we're going to copy this value, paste it in here. We're going to do the exact same thing for the secret key. Right, what happens next? Well, if I type env again, we'll see that we have two new variables down the bottom, API key, API secret. That means that these keys are in our local environment. All right, so how do we actually use keys in our local environment? Well, in our Python project, we're gonna import our operating system. So we're gonna write import OS. We're gonna get rid of these values here, and we're gonna put OS get env. And then we're gonna put the name of the, of the variable that we want, in this case, API key. And we're gonna do the same for the secret. All right, so what happens now when we run our pro project? So here you see it prints out the values of our secret just as it did before, but this time it's using our local environment to be able to do this. Okay, so that's all well and good, but this is not a very efficient way of dealing with this problem. If I destroy this terminal at the moment, create a new one. If I run the exact same command, env, well, our secrets are gone. If I try and run the project, then our values come back as nothing. So that means that every time we create, we run a project in a new window, we have to inject the secrets again. Well. That seems like a lot of work. It's probably not something I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to hard coding secrets. 
But there is a way to be able to do this. The project python.inv is a fantastic project that's used lots and lots around the industry. And it's a way of automatically loading in our environment variables from a .env file. So we can install this on our machine really easily using PyPy. So I'm just going to run the command pip3 install python.inv. Mine's already installed, but yours will install in a couple of seconds. So how do we actually use this project? Well, it's incredibly simple. The first step is we need to create a .env file. So I'm going to use command touch.env and you'll see that it's created this env file. It's an environment variable file. These files are used in multiple different languages to store environment variables. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, the same environment variables that we did before. They were API key and API secret. So here we're going to put in our values of our secrets that we did before. Mine is just dummy data. And we're going to save this file. So now what happens? Well, we're not quite done yet. We need to bring in the .env package into our code. So we're going to go from .env import load. And once we've added that package in, we just need to run the function load underscore dot env and save that. All right, that's actually it. We have now created an environment variable file, put our secrets in there, loaded those environment variable files into our local memory, and then we're using them. So what happens when we run this project now? Well, it spits out our secrets just as it did before. And it's taking them directly from this file. We can prove that. I'll put a Z in front of this. Let's save and run this project again. And you'll see we have the Z in front of it. Now, there is one problem here. The .env file that we've created is now incredibly sensitive. And just like it's bad to have hard-coded secrets in your code, well, it's especially bad to have this file end up somewhere like a Git repository. So we're going to add one more file in here that's really important. We're going to create a file called .git ignore. There is a whole video I've made on exactly what this file is and how we can use it in various ways. But essentially, I'm going to put in here our .env file and save this. All this means is that this is going to be excluded from any git command. So if we do git ag all, the env file won't be added into there. So that's really important step that we take if we're using env files. So there we have it. That's how we handle our secrets as environment variables and pass them securely into our application to be able to use them. But like anything in software engineering, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. I'm not sure if that's still an appropriate term to use, but I'll stick with it. There's lots of ways that we can do different things. So let's come up with a scenario. Let's say that we have multiple environments. We have an environment for development and testing, and we have an environment for production and a number of other environments. We want to be able to switch between the secrets that we're using for different environments. And we can't effectively do this easily in this current method. So we're going to change. We're still going to use the .env package. We're not going to use our operating system environment, so we can get rid of that. We're going to change this function to .env values. Now, the .env values means that we can store secrets as a dictionary. They'll be converted into a dictionary, and we can use them as such in our Python package. So here, we're going to create a dictionary called secrets. And these are going to equal .env underscore value. And these are going to come from our .env file. All right, easy. Now this one line actually gets rid of this whole section of applying secrets. So we can get rid of all of that. And we're also going to change a little bit of just how we print it. So now we're going to print a section of our dictionary. So we're going to go print secrets and then the name, so API underscore key. And we'll do the same for our, our secret API key. 
All right. So what happens now when we run this project? Well, we get the exact same results. So this is another way of handling secrets. Now, I said here that in this case, we would have multiple environments. So let's create another environment here. I'm going to create a new environment variable file called .env. Dot .dev. So this is our development environment environment ugh. This is our development environment variable file. I'm going to copy these across. But we're going to just put dash dev at the end of both of them. Now back in our file, if I want to load in a different environment, I can change this, run the code again, and you'll see we get our development uh, environment variable. So this can be quite handy. And just as a bonus exercise, what I'll show you is how we can assign different environment variables based on the name of our file. So we're going to create here, we're going to wrap this in a function called main. Now what we're going to do is we're going to write an if statement that say, if our file name is main, then I want you to run this function main. So if... equals then run the function main so let's save this if we run this again it prints out our code if we were to rename our file dev then it's not going to print out anything so this is just a, a silly example to show that hey if we have multiple different environments we can quickly use different env files to deal with them and using the env package we can handle these and even based on a username which is a little bit of a silly example but you get the idea and i'm sure as a software engineer you're going to be able to come up with much more creative ways of using this but that is the crux of it so i hope you've enjoyed this video this is how we can use and manage secrets in Python using the .env environment. I'm, I'll be creating more tutorials on how to manage secrets in different environments, including how to manage them from Vault, from KMSs, and from cloud providers. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so that you get notified. We create content like this all the time, and I do hope you'll consider joining the Git Guardian family. So thanks for watching, and remember, good code is secure code.